Hello and welcome to this tutorial on getting started with running E3SM. My name is Rob Jacob and I'm the E3SM Infrastructure Group Lead. To follow along on this tutorial, you should already have access to an E3SM supported machine. This particular tutorial will use Edison and NERSC, but the commands I'm going to show you can be run on any supported machine. Now you can go to this link to get an allocation on NERSC. I'll be showing that later. And then this link on our website shows all of our supported machines. You also need to be familiar with Linux Unix operating system and basic commands of that system because E3SM is controlled through the command line. What we're going to be doing today is making an E3SM executable. E3SM is a compiled program. You must compile your own version of it using your own copy of the code in order to run E3SM. Now, compiling a complex program like E3SM on a supercomputer it could be very hard, but it's simplified by several provided scripts, which I'm going to show you. Let's go to our website. This is e3sm.org, and it contains lots of information about the model. And it also contains a quick start guide, which is what I'm going to basically go through here today. So the quick start guide starts off with some information on getting the code, with some information about all the input data, which you don't have to worry about if you're running E3SM on a supported machine, they'll all be there. And finally, we get to running E3SM, and there's two different ways to do that. One is with a script, and the other is with uh, a series of manual commands. So I'm going to start off with um, showing you how to run the model using a single script called the run E3SM script. Let's go get a terminal window. So I've already have an account on Edison and I've logged on and I have a subdirectory called tutorials. It's currently empty. I'm going to get a copy of this run E3SM script which is available on the E3SM org website. And I'm just going to be copying and pasting commands from that quick start page into my terminal window here. First, I'm going to use a wget command, which will download the script from the website directly to this directory. All right, let's take a look at this script really quick. So it is your one-step script to run in E3SM. It will download all the code, build it, and submit a job to the queue. There's some variables up top that you can modify, and then there's an explanation about those variables. But you don't have to worry about modifying anything because this script is all set up to work here on Edison. First, I have to make it executable. And now I can just start running. So like I said, first it's going to download the code and it's going to then build it and run it. And that's going to take a while. So while that's going on, why don't we take a look at how to use scene commands to run the model. On the website, that would be down here and running manually. And I'm again just going to be copying and pasting commands. Uh, but I'm going to use a different terminal window. If my script is chugging away. Um, first, I'm going to need to get the code. We keep our code on GitHub. And the command to check out a copy of the code is also on that quick start web page. All right, the code is finished checking out. Let's take a look at that command again. It's git clone, which is a basic git command. I'm using a branch of the model where you can reproduce exactly the 1.0 results. 
I need to check out several sub-modules. So there's this recursive command. And then here's the path to the actual repository. So what did this do? It checked out a directory called E3FM. Let's go take a look at it. Looks like a typical source code directory. There's a readme, there's a license. There's a couple of subdirectories here. The subdirectory called components has the source code for all of the actual models, our atmosphere model, our ocean model, etc. Subdirectory called seam, seam stands for the common infrastructure for modeling the Earth. And we uh, use that along with CESM to uh, construct our climate model. And inside that directory is a subdirectory called scripts. And here is most of the commands that we're going to need to actually create and run a case. So from here, I'm going to cut and paste another command from the quick start guide. We actually start making the case. So this command has a lot of arguments. The first one is the name of the case. That can be anything you want. In my case, it's going to be a CMIP6 PI control. Next is the comp set or component set. This is the group of all the submodels that we're going to use. It's actually a string to represent a group of submodels. And then next is the resolution. This is uh, the NE30 atmosphere grid and the OEC, actually 30 to 60 ocean grid. Oh, this uh, comp set indicates that we're running the water cycle case with 1850 initial conditions and the CMIP6 forcing. The next argument is the machine. This is Edison. This is the only command you would change if you were running on a different supported machine. And then there's some user mods, which will automatically make some more changes to this basic concept to run the CMIP6 case exactly. All right, my case has been set up. And there's a directory called CWIP 6 pi control. The rest of the commands will happen inside that directory. And I can make as many of these case directories as I want for as many cases as I want to be run. So the next step is to set up the case. Okay, the model finished the setup phase. And what this basically did was check to see that all of the input files needed were present. And it also constructed the name list that are going to be used. The next step is going to be to build the model. And this will take quite a while because it's a lot of code and it's a pretty busy machine. In fact, if we go back to that terminal where we were running the uh, unscript, we can see that it's still building. So instead of waiting for this to finish, let's go and uh, take a look at a case that I already built to see what the next steps are. So here is a, a very similar directory created by create new case where I've already built the model. And there's a file in here that will update itself so you can see where you are in the process. And that's called case status. Oops. So this file is called uh, case status and it has inside of it a record of all the commands that you basically executed in this case directory. There were some Excel change commands executed for me. That's from that one of the arguments in the create new case command. And then I did the setup and the build phase. So the next step is to submit. Okay, the job has submitted. And let's just verify that by taking a look at Queue. There it is. It's actually already started running.
That's pretty nice. And here's a list of the nodes that it's running on. You can check our case status file, and it's updated itself, saying that the submit started, it submitted a case with this job ID, and the run is started as well. So these seam commands to run the model create a directory called the case directory, and that's mostly what we've been looking at so far. But if you want to find more output from the model, you need to look at a couple of different directories. To find where the build system output, including the executable are, you want to get to the XE root, which you can pull out of our XML files by using the XML query command. And then the output from running the model is in the render. Let's see where those are in that case we were just looking at, the one we had already built. So Edison here has been configured to put everything in the global scratch directory. So this path winds up being quite long. And depending on how another supported machine is configured, this will probably be a different path. And then the run dir is here. And I can just change directory to those directories to look at the output. Okay, again, all of these commands that I showed you are on the quick start guide at e3sm.org. If anything isn't clear, if you have some questions, you can ask a question at our forum, which is indicated here. And you can find out more information about Seam and the commands like create new case and case setup that I used to make that model at the Seam user's guide, which is available here. Okay, thank you for listening, and good luck.